Internet service provider Access Kenya recorded a 14.8 jump in pre-tax profits, which climbed to 87.8 million. To give us more analysis on this, we're joined by Chris Enanu, the company's MD. Welcome on board, Chris. Now, as just, as just reported, um, your pre-tax profits climbed by 14.8%. Just uh, describe the, the financials um, with our viewers. Well, basically, um, our top line has grown. Um, and most of this growth is from our core business, which is the corporate internet bit of it. Um, we would have done a much better job in terms of the pre-tax and the profit after tax uh, if we hadn't had two unusual items in there, which were interest expense, which is much higher because obviously of the interest rates um, in the last half year, and fiber cuts. So basically, those are the core of the numbers for the half year. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to fiber cuts, and but um, let me first of all start with the operating environment. And uh, we know that in this, in the first of the in the first half of the year, we we saw the interest rates were actually 18 percent after central bank came in in December last year and raised the lending rates to 18 percent due to high inflation. How how does this impact on on your performance? Of course, it means uh, higher interest expense because um, we had a bit of debt which we were, were paying down, but. Uh, so obviously, with the higher interest rate, so you pay more in interest expense. Um, however, our operating uh, cash has been able to help us to actually pay down much more of the debt than we expected for the half year because of the increased uh, profitability. So it affected us negatively, but overall, we still came up with uh, much stronger and positive results, as you can see. Mm -hmm. With regards to fiber cuts, you actually suffered two major ones during the, during the period. Um, what sort of Im impact uh, did it have on the performance? Um, quite a significant impact because when you have your international fiber cables cut, you have to obviously buy spot price for capacity for a period where the major links are down. And that obviously then impacts the bottom line. It was an expense that we were not expecting. But these are some of the things that are moving forward. You, you have to hedge against, or rather, you have to either A, insure, or try to make sure you put some money aside for that. Um, it was quite a heavy impact, almost 20 million shillings, um, because of these fiber cuts. So that would have definitely improved the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Now, Chris, Access Kenya controls about 42% of the corporate end of the, you know, the market share. Um, just tell us the areas you'll be, you'll be keen to maximize on so that you, know, you can continue growing as well as consolidating this position. To consolidate the position, we are looking at doing a lot more on our IT space. I know it's been something we've been working on for the last two years, but if you look at the results in, in detail, you will realize that um, our IT business has definitely moved from the red to the black and soon will be going into the blue. So to make the clients more sticky, that's one of the strategies that we're going to be following. Uh, over and above that is going to be business as usual. The corporate segment of the market is growing. And I think finally people are beginning to understand the difference between a provider like Access Kenya and somebody like Safaricom. We're not into the mass market. I've always kept on saying the corporate bit of the market is growing. That's our core business. That's where our DNA is, and that's where our focus is going to be. Which leads me to my next question, and that is competition. And you know, we've seen a couple of um, you know the telecommunication players looking at you know moving, you know, growing from from their base and coming into the into the the use of data. How much of a threat does this pose for Access Kenya? Very little, to be very frank and honest. The data market is big. The data market consists of three very clear segments. The mass market on the bottom, the medium SME in the middle, and the corporate and enterprise. 90% of our business is on the corporate and enterprise level, a little bit of it on the SME, very little of it, or if any, in the mass market. Most of the telecom players who are moving into data, moving into mass market data, this applies to Airtel, Orange, Safaricom. Even Zuku as a player in triple play is also in that part of that market. So it doesn't really touch us. Our market is more, it's, it's a smaller market in terms of number, bigger in terms of revenue, but well-defined. These are people who need reliability and proper service. They, it's, it's, it's not, uptime is a very critical thing for this level of clients. And so in their choice of making a provider, they'll be looking at somebody who understands the solutions that they need and is able to provide that reliability. Mm -hmm. And Chris, as, 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 as you approach the end, just tell us about the outlook for the second half of the year. Which areas will, will you be looking at in, in growing your market share? Well, um, we expect the second half to be pretty much like the first in terms of performance. And so therefore, obviously, the strategy is going to be similar. What we'll do, obviously, is to relook at the costs um, and see whether we can 
do anything on the to make our cost base more efficient and we would also be looking at obviously strategic um, uh, investment in terms of our rollout in national there's a lot of emphasis in Kenya on county government systems because of the new constitution and so therefore you will see us rolling out more outlets into making sure that we're a proper national player